Hello everyone, hola a todos, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sekhmet Divine, aka The Brown Yogi. And today we're going to be talking all about Carl G. Young and the origins of shadow work. So before we get started, I'm just going to share a little bit about myself. I'm an anti-racist Raja yoga teacher. I'm 23 years old and I also make spiritual self-care products. I've been practicing yoga for about three years now and I've been actively practicing shadow work for about two years now. Since I've been on this journey for quite some time, I thought it was an appropriate time to um, share all about what shadow work is, my experience with it, and help other people through their own shadow work journey. If you're interested in diving deeper into shadow work, check out the link below to my Etsy store where you'll find a seven day mindfulness challenge where I guide you through shadow work with the use of journaling, affirmations, meditation, and yoga. So shadow work is a huge hot topic right now as a lot of people are coming into spirituality and they're hearing other people talk about shadow work, people naturally are gonna be like, what is that? How do you do that? How do I do that? How is that going to help my personal spiritual journey? A lot of people talk about shadow work and have no idea about where it even came from, how it came to be. They just simply see it as a spiritual topic, a spiritual uh, tool to use. When in fact, it was much, much, much before modern spirituality. And it actually came from a gentleman by the name of Carl G. Young. Knowledge of the history and the background and how shadow work and how the word shadow self even came to be is an important part of understanding how it affects you today in 2021 and for the rest of your life. So Carl G. Young was born in July 26, 1875 in Switzerland to a pretty religious family. His father was a minister, I believe. And when it came to what he wanted to do with his life, he had a couple of options. There was a couple of things that he really, really liked. And so he kind of was just like, I'm going to see which out of these couple of options I like. I believe one of them was like architecture. But the thing that kept popping up in his head was this desire, this longing to understand the symbolism of dreams and where they came from and what they mean. He had had that desire since he was a young, young child and was always really interested in the symbolism and imagery that he found in his own dreams. So when it came to like choosing between architecture and diving deep into his subconscious, he chose to dive deep. He originally studied under Freud and he loved it until he didn't. As he started to continue to study under Freud, he started to realize that some of the things that Freud believed, he didn't necessarily believe in. Specifically, uh, infant sexuality, which bro, I totally get it. <laughs> they essentially just had a falling out because they had different ideas. And thus, the split between Freudian psychoanalyzation and Jungian psychoanalyzation began. Some other things they disagreed on was Jung actually believed that the libido was not just this like sexual force. He actually believed that the libido is psychic energy and motivates us. It motivates motivates our spirituality, our intellect, our creativity. It's more than just an animalistic nature, although he was not shy with the animalistic tendencies humans have. But his idea that the libido um, is connected to creativity and intellect and all of these other things really to me sounds exactly like the root chakra and the sacral chakra. Perhaps the more you learn about him, you might have a similar reaction to me where you kind of start to see that a lot of the things he talked about have its roots or at least are very, very similar to other spiritual hot topics now like chakra healing understanding the symbolism between of our dreams. Like there's a lot of stuff that I do really believe that he kind of laid the foundation for a lot of spiritual stuff. And another thing that they kind of disagreed on was Freud was really interested in the past and how the past affects and shapes our future and present. However, Jung wasn't really like that. Jung was like, yeah, the past is kind of important, but what's more important is our intentionality in the moment and how we want our future to be, right? He believed that what we chose to do right now is gonna have more of an effect on our future than our past. During his 40 years of psychoanalyzation, he shared a lot of gems that I'm sure you guys know. Introversion, extroversion, synchronicity, and yes, the famous shadow self. He was really concerned with individuation or the integration of opposing things like unconscious and subconscious, the feminine and the masculine, light and dark. He helped people make a sense of their dreams and their perceived reality. And he did so by really encouraging them to do creative expression. He would definitely tell his patients to like paint out the things that they saw in their dreams. And to me, that's like, hello, modern therapy is really big onto like creative expression now. To him, the soul and spirituality were very real. And because we perceive it as our reality, then yes, it's very much so real, even if other people can't see it. He defined the unconscious as several parts, the ego, the personal unconsciousness, 
and the collective unconsciousness. The ego he defined as our thoughts, feelings, our memories, our identity. Our personal unconscious is our repressed memory, our forgotten information that our brain somehow still holds on to. And our collective unconscious are patterns and behaviors that are passed down to us from our ancestors. And because humans all have ancestors, there's a lot of things that we see today that was very present hundreds of thousands of years ago. It has become a part of the collective unconsciousness. To me, the collective unconsciousness really seems important when it comes to racism and patriarchy. The things that our ancestors went through and the hurt they endured, the trauma they endured, the lies they were told are definitely having an effect on us today, but we know that it is. So because we have acknowledged it and know that it's there, we can do our part to take those seeds of hate and lies out of our brain and to plant seeds of love instead. The shadow self that he defined actually comes from four huge archetypes that he described or defined. Um, there was tons and tons of archetypes, but there are four big ones. The first being persona, our outward appearance, the way people perceive us. To me, that also read like our rising sign, right? What people automatically think of when they see you. Next was the anima and animus. They are respectively the feminine and masculine energy. The feminine is super repressed. And as a result, the masculine cannot fully grow. And patriarchy has definitely repressed the feminine, thinking that it's going to uphold the masculine, but in fact, it stunts all of our growths. Yes, regardless of what parts you do or don't have, even if you're some white dude, some rich white dude, you're still being oppressed. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, what do you mean they have money, they have privilege? I'm telling you they're oppressed because they are not able to be in their full humanity. It is not in our humanity to be selfish and hoarding shit and hurting other people and wanting power over. No, as humanity, we should be thinking of power with, not power over. Men of all colors are told by society to cut off parts of themselves, their emotional connection. They're thinking that emotions and crying are somehow not synonymous with strength, but it is. And then on the other side, because the masculine is so heightened and so like overpowered that people who are trying to step into the divine feminine are having issues too. Their masculine is toxic. Their masculine isn't in alignment. So really it's that, that balance needed of both. And Jung saw that too. The next archetype is the self. And the goal of the self is to reach selfhood, which to me, I kind of see as self-actualization, nirvana. The self can be defined as the unity in our experience. And finally, the shadow self. The shadow he defines as our animalistic tendencies. It's a creative and a destructive energy at the same time. He believed that the problems of modern society are attributed to the fact that we don't really have a center. There's an alienation from our instinctual foundation of wanting to be one with nature and one with the collective. And because that's not really represented uh, today, a lot of people have issues from it. During his time, people thought he was wild. And trigger warning, they called him schizophrenic. This was especially true after a four-year period in his life, which he named the confrontation with the unconscious. In the late 1910s, his visions and dreams started to become a lot more intense and a lot more vivid and a lot more confusing. Now, think about this for a second. Dreams appear to us in very symbolic forms, and oftentimes what we see is deeper than what it really is. Now, when these things are confusing enough for us to understand, imagine trying to convey comprehension to another person when you yourself are kind of struggling figuring out what the fuck is going on. So when he tried to tell the people what was going on, they weren't really understanding. And as a result, they thought he was crazy. Because the visions and dreams were so overwhelming, he decided to resign from his hospital job. And he took four years to do an intense deep dive into himself. See, even though Young spent 40 years analyzing other people, no one had ever analyzed him, not even himself. People thought that because he spent his time helping other people, that somehow he was going to be a lot more quicker or a lot more adept at understanding what his dreams are. But he's just a person, just like we are. And dreams, like I said, are really symbolic. My dreams and your dreams are usually going to be slightly ahead of the consciousness of the person. So that means that he didn't really have like an edge, let's say, um, to being able to understand his dreams. He himself too had to be, had to really just sit with the symbols and figure out what was being said to him. What was the lesson? What were they trying to convey to him? 
As a result of this confrontation, he compiled his 40 years of expertise from his patient's experience and his own personal experience, especially, especially the significant break he had from Freud and basically created a masterpiece. He attributed the big split he had with Freud to a difference in character types and personality types. We all have our own different personality types. These character types then influence our behavior. With all this information, with all these downloads he was receiving, he published a book called Psychological Types. And he regard this as his greatest work. He explained how these different types can work together instead of tearing each other down to create something new and better and beautiful. And so many people were taken aback because there weren't many books talking about how we can all come together as a humanity, you know? A lot of them didn't have that. He did exactly what every great spiritual warrior should do. He learned from his experience, he learned from the sun bulls, he paid attention to the omens, and he took what he learned and shared it with the collective. He inspired lots of people to learn about themselves, about others, and resolve their inner and outer conflicts. One of his students talked about how him and his wife were in like a really shitty relationship and they would argue all the time and their relationship pretty much consumed both of their existences until one day, dude got annoyed and was like, I'm done. I'm gonna learn about Jungian psychology and I'm gonna analyze myself and I'm gonna figure this out and they both did and they both felt so much better after they started to learn more about themselves with his help. He rose to fame but he still stayed human and led a very deeply spiritual life. He had this beautiful home on some land he bought and he attributes it to his very spiritual life. So I'm gonna pull up a quote for you guys that came from him that really moved me. I am in the midst of my true life. I am most deeply myself. At times I feel as if I am spread out over the landscape and inside things and then myself living in every tree in the clashing of the waves and the clouds and animals that come and go and the procession of the seasons. Without my piece of earth, my life's work would not come to be. Deep shit. <laughs> And I mean, it's definitely my dream to just live on, live with nature and be super spiritual and just vibe. There was no real method to how he did his analyzation. People around him said he just somehow was able to walk through heaven and hell at the same time. I believe that the spiritual community's fascination with shadow work is evidence that spirituality is rooted in quantum physics, psychology, earth science, herbalism, etc. All of these concepts are here to help us heal ourselves, grow, and heal the collective. As I always say, heal yourself, heal the community, Heal the collective. Even though spiritual leaders and spiritual pages really, really water down shadow work and Carl G. Young and his kind of little breakdown, um, the fact that people, so many people are talking about shadow work seems to kind of get the job done. In fact, one of the reasons why Carl G. Young wasn't so popular during his time and Freud was, was because Freud was believed to write for the layman. Carl G. Young didn't use words that were easily understood, so it didn't really get easily decimated as fast and easily as Freud. But is there a benefit to using watered down lingo in order to spread information to lots of people? I don't know. That's really up to you to decide. And that's why when I do these videos, I always say, use this as a place to begin your exploration. I'm only one person and it's impossible for you to expect me to teach you everything about such a vast topic. For real y'all, people go to school. They literally do, co they literally get college degrees understanding psychology. I'm a college dropout because college was not for me. So I do my best as someone who wants to teach. I try to learn as much as I can, but Ultimately, it is up to you to learn more. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell so you're notified when I post more yoga and meditation. If you're interested in learning more about shadow work, check out the link in the description box to the rest of this series. Peace, love, and light. Namaste.